Here's welcome to the ECED 3204 microprocessors uh, lab number three. So this lab will be talking about how we can do some um, button presses and as well as keypads. So what will probably seem like a simple thing is we're going to have a little push button, um, you know, all sorts of products have these inside them. Uh, and you can just press the button and we want to read the state of it. And we'll expand on that by also looking at a larger uh, keypad, you know, such as this one has 4x4, four four, but, you know, for telephone or pin pad, anything like that. Um, how we interface these to a microcontroller. So I have it set up from the previous lab. I can just remove all that. And going through the lab, what you'll see is that um, we're first going to need to make a, uh, a basic program like before. So before we do this, I'll just briefly discuss that the sort of interesting thing we've run into is I, you know, I set up a button and I measured on an oscilloscope what the waveform looks like here. And you can see the button initially is off and later it's on. The problem is that as I'm hitting it, there's actually all these little spikes um, before it reaches its final state. So the, this is known as the button bouncing when you press or release it. And if you just look for, okay, when's, you know, the button goes from zero to one, you'll count this as one press, two press, and then the third press here. So you won't just have one single button event, but you'll have several button events. So debouncing is what you'll learn how to do in this lab using a very simple method um, and it will help you eliminate that problem. So as before, I'm going to use the same. You'll have to look back at lab number one if you uh, need details of how to set up the board. Uh, the tactile push button, which I have a photo of here and that's what you saw earlier. Um, has this connection between, so the two legs, so this leg is internally electrically connected to this leg, and same thing with the back leg, internally is electrically connected to the other back leg that you can't really see there. Um, so when we plug it into the breadboard, we'll have to make sure we uh, use that properly. And you can see a little oops, photo here of, um, you know, when I plug it into the breadboard, it should look like that. So in particular, pay careful attention to which way the legs are coming out of the package because you have to remember how they're, how the two of them are connected together. So in this case, these two are connected, I believe. And you can go back to double check. Yep. And, and the other two here are connected. Um, so that means that, you know, all of these form one electrical connection and all of these form one electrical connection here. All right, so let me turn on the camera. And again, doing that same thing I just told you. So I'm just, I'm just gonna stick it somewhere down here. Um, it doesn't really matter. And again, all of these, I'm gonna say let's, let's, you know, all this side and all this side is all connected together. So I'm just gonna make one side ground. And the other side of the push button, I'm going to connect to a, uh, one of the pins here. So if you go back to the lab, just clear this. Um, you can see this is the schematic we want to build up. So I'm going to connect it up to um, port B4. So we want to wire that into PB4. Um, similar to before, you just look at the silk screen to figure out where that is. So there. Uh, and I'm also again going to wire up an LED and the LED will now go to port D7, so that LED there. Um, and port D7 is way at the top. And same deal, you've gotta be careful which side's positive. Oops, that's one wrong. All right, again, we'll put a current limiting resistor here. and we'll get a wire to connect that to ground. All right, so something like that. And I just have the other side connected to ground over here. OK. 
Okay, so now that we have that, we can write some uh, the code that we need. So there's just showing you the setup again. Um, so we'll start a new project and you can see the first lab if you want details on all this. Lab three, part one. Select the 644 device. Uh, and we have our example code. So all we're going to do now is uh, we are actually going to make some code that reads in the pin state and toggles an LED every time the, the button's pressed. Uh, so why we're doing this toggling is to make it more obvious when, um, when we get this bouncing event. So if you just read the, the state of the button, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't necessarily see the bouncing because you'd be using your eye. You'd have to look at a scope or something. So I'm going to set um, LED as output first. Let me just move this down. Um, I'm then going to turn on. I'm actually going to use a internal pull-ups. So turn on pull-up on input. So this is because the the push button only pulls this pin to ground. It doesn't set it high. So we need the pull-up to make it high um, normally. Oops having an issue with my keyboard here. Unsetting chair, so I'm gonna save the state of the LED. Um, save the state of the button. And I'm gonna remember the last button state. So this sort of example code, there's a bunch of ways to solve it. So you should really, if you look at the lab, it goes through um, everything you need to do. And you probably can't even really read all the stuff here. Uh, so I'm going to read the a game off pin B. Um, pin B.4 is where the button's connected. So if the button state is not equal to the last button state, um, and remember the button gets pushed to zero uh, when when it's pressed because it's it gets pulled down. We have that pull up, so the button is pressing it down. Uh, so if the state changes and the button's being pressed, what we're going to do is we're just going to toggle the state of the LED. So we'll use an XOR with 1. Um, and that will toggle it every time. And we need to save the, uh, the state of the, pre or the previous state of the button. And then now we can set the, uh, the LED on or off. D. So either set this port uh, pin high or low. There's nothing else in the port, so I'm just using a cheater way here, and I set the whole port pin low. Obviously, if you're using other pins, you need to be more careful of this. Um, so let's see if I manage to make no errors. All right, so we go back to the, the same program wrap as before. And we go to our labs, lab three, part one. All right, so programmed. Um, and what we should see, if I turn off my camera here. So every time I hit this button, the LED toggles, which is what we expect. So remembering from the code, it should only change when I press the button down, so that's a correct toggle. I press it down, it goes off. When I release it, nothing should happen, so that's good. Um, if you do this, you start doing this, what you'll see is that it will eventually make errors due to bouncing. So especially if you're pressing it very hard and releasing nicely, um, but if we start doing quicker, so there you can see I press the button down, it went off for a second, but it toggled again when I released the button. So there you can see, it, again, it toggled very quickly, but because the button bounced, it set to a wrong final state. Um, so there's another one, a glitch. Another glitch. That was a glitch too, because when I released it, it shouldn't have changed state. So you can sort of see where these bounces are um, 
are affecting you. So how you'll solve this is by looking through the labs, uh, it will discuss, pull up the lab here, uh, lab three. So it's gonna discuss, uh, we move this by adding a, a delay operation where we read the state um, and then we reread it and we check, is the state with this 20 millisecond delay the same? Uh, so I won't go through that all example, but that's part of the lab. So the second part of the lab, part two, is how we drive uh, what's called multiplexing, where in this example here, we have uh, nine LEDs. So you can see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and if you just connected each one to a port pin, you'd need nine port pins. And instead, we were able to do this with the only the six pins, and that's because we use multiplexing. So you can see there's six pins here. Uh, how this works is that we have to we drive multiple pins at once. So for example, to turn on LED eight, um, we would set this pin to low, so to ground. Oops, come up. And then we would set this pin here. Um, to the positive voltage, so you know, plus whatever volts. And this will send voltage here through the LED and out. And none of the other LEDs will turn on um, because they, you know, this voltage here, this pin is not grounded, for example, so there's nowhere this current doesn't flow through the other LEDs. So that's briefly how multiplexing um, can work, and I won't go through all of the the specifics here because you can read in the the lab it basically we're going to uh, set up this circuit here so we have four LEDs so LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, LED 4 and you can see them all here four LEDs um, and in this case because of how multiplexing works we're actually still using four port pins so you're not actually saving port pins but this basic idea, uh, you can then expand to drive more LEDs, uh, or more systems. And again, for example, to turn on LED 2, what you're going to have to figure out is that I need to set port B1 high, and then I need to set port B2 low, and the other one should just be floating. You don't set them low or high normally. Um, or, for example, in this case, what you could do is you could set port B3 high uh, because the high wouldn't allow any current to flow through the LEDs. Clear that. Um, so you'll have to fill in this table using that sort of thing to figure out, well, which ones uh, do I need to set high and low for each LED? Uh, you can do this then by making a, a chunk of code that simplifies so it says when you set, you know, to set LED zero uh, on, well, here's the uh, the pin settings we need. We need to set one of these pins high, one of these pins low. And you can then start looking at how you, how could you turn two LEDs on? So for example, if you wanted to turn on LED one and LED, four at the same time without turning on LED three. Well, you would need to enable this line, obviously to turn on LED one. Uh, the problem is as soon as you try to turn on LED four, you're also gonna turn on LED two. So instead what you'll figure out is that if you turn on LED one um, and then very quickly switch to LED four and then switch to LED one, your eye will blend the two together and it'll look like LED one and LED four are on at the same time. So you'll experiment with that. Uh, the final part of the lab will use this in reverse and what you're going to do is multiplex a keypad. So um, this keypad, there's a schematic here of a simple keypad and what you can see for example is that when this button here is pressed um, it's going to short together this pin row 3 and this pin column 3. So this is actually the same as the physical keypad you have here. Um, when you hit, and you can see on the back sort of how there's only eight, uh, eight pins, and that's because 
there's a few of them are row and a few of them are column. And you can even actually look, so on the circuit board, you can sort of see here how um, all of these are connected together. And same thing, all of the columns. You can see below that possibly, so this column is connected to that, to that, to that, to that. Uh, and then you can see, for example, this uh, row here is wired up to one of these pins. So I think this pin right there is uh, goes to that row. Oops, right there. And you can see on the board how it goes to this bottom row. So we're going to actually use the microcontroller to read this, um, this touchpad. So if you look at the lab, uh, you'll see the schematics very basic, and I haven't done part two in this example, so you're going to have to wire that, make sure that's still wired up. And all we do is we actually have the, uh, the touchpad connected in there. So I can briefly at least show you how this is wired, because there's two ways that you might be able to wire it, depending on your, uh, your specific uh, touchpad you get. Now, the easiest thing to do, so what we need to do is we need... Um, this pin here, so the top pin, we want to wire to port D7 all the way down to the bottom pin to port D0. Uh, it's possible, if you're very careful, that you can actually manage to fit them all together. And you have to be careful to also ensure you're lining these up right. So, I don't know if the camera will focus, but you can see there how I'm lining up port D7 um, with the top pin and port D0 is going to be lined up with the bottom pin. And I'm just able to fit that in like that. Now, it's also possible your keypad won't fit like this. It's a very tight fit. Uh, you can see this almost overlaps. So if not, all it is, as in the, the lab manual, instead, um, pull that out. And what we'll do is you'll just wire it, put it over here, and physically wire. Um, and again, you'll have to pay attention to which is pin one can be sort of hard to see, you know, you can make, try to make a little mark, um, or put a wire in with where you're aligning pin, the first pin with, so I'm just looking down here, and you can see, where is it, this guy, so here's where I've ended up with um, the first pin with, so that's fine. And then I'll just wire that to PD7. Oops, I went off PD7. So in this case, there's a bit of a uh, angle, but that's fine. So all you do is you then would wire through all these. Um, so once they're wired in, you could end up like again if you're using the wire or something like this. Uh, if not, you might be able to plug it right in, and the lab will go through how you how you were able to read um, each of the push buttons and then displaying the hex value on the LED. So the objective here is that when I hit, so if I hit, you know, five on the keypad, then it's gonna convert that to binary. Um, so if I hit five, it's gonna convert that to zero, one, zero, one, and then, so one, and then display that on these LEDs, so it'll be off, on, off, on. Okay. Uh, and you can see in this example here, I'm hitting the E button is hidden, um, and E in binary is one, one, oops, come on, one, 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 zero. Um, so this is showing you how you're able to actually read from the keypad and display this on the LED. And we're using multiplexing for both of these systems. So we're using multiplexing to read from the keypad and we're using multiplexing to display the value on the LED. So that's all you'll be doing in lab number three.